Know ye that this is the kingdom of kicks, wine, bites, drugs, and chicks. People think it's a shovel head all the time, so I like to tell them that it's not, and then they try to tell me that I'm wrong. This is Fozzie's knucklehead from the first season of Happy Days. It's a chopper I built out of spite because someone that bought a XS650 from someone before didn't know how to change a spark plug. Every one of my bikes has a different crown on it. I don't drink. <laughs> cool bike. It's way too nice for us. We shouldn't own it. Yep. So. We'll see how long it lasts. My name is AJ Anderson. Uh, I'm originally from Des Moines, Iowa, but I am in Ogden, Utah now, and I own a uh, dream company. I brought a 1947 knucklehead to the show that I call Candyland. Um, it was originally built for Born Free 13 last summer. Has mostly original parts and everything else that I could hand make on it. I pretty much draw from you know, not any specific image, but just like a whole era from anywhere from like mid to late 50s all the way getting up into the 70s where guys really went crazy with what they call a molded bike, you know, and spent all the time either doing metal work and, and body work or a combination of the two. That's probably, you know, overwhelmingly what the most time in the whole motorcycle is, is just molding all those pieces into each other and making them fluid and, and all that. So that's and that's just something that I kind of have fallen in love with. It's hard for me to, pretty much every motorcycle I build for the last few years, even if it's minor, has some level of molding going on on it somewhere. It's just like such a neat aspect to me to add to a motorcycle. Until I did my first molding on a motorcycle, I mean, it was, I just, just pretty much dove in, read the back of a can of body filler, like what you're supposed to do with it. You know, I think I had seen a buddy, you know, throw some fins on a bike or whatever here and there. And then I just just winged it on the first couple that are pretty rough, you know, and then uh, 
to get that actually like nice smooth finish it's like like anything else you know it can be pretty challenging to a certain level but to take it all the way where you really have like you know buttery smooth finishes like you get from the body work and everything just it's just time it's just there's no there's really no machine that you know I mean you can get away with using some sanders and stuff a little bit here and there but more or less to get that you're a piece of sandpaper in your hand and working those shapes into into being and I I appreciate it for that too in an era where everything is you know mechanized basically you know something that still takes like a hand touch if you want that if you want that look you can't get it without having you know a hand touch on the on the pieces it's just an auxiliary uh fuel tank that is i knew i knew i was going to do a narrowed extra even smaller than normal small chopper tank so and i do ride my bikes uh you know as much as possible and enough to want to have some gas to get around so I figured with narrowing the tank and making it to where it's maybe a little over a gallon, adding another gallon in the back would be helpful. And then uh, this old uh, military vet that lives right behind where my shop is in Ogden, um, he came over and gave us some tanks one day, and this was one of them. And it was it was quite a, it was probably almost maybe three times the size width wise that it is. And the second that he brought it over, I knew I was like. At some point, I'm going to use that for an auxiliary fuel tank. Um, and then I later learned that it's like an old Briggs & Stratton tank is what it is. And I cut maybe about the same size that it is out of the middle of it and then, you know, welded it back together and shrunk it all down to fit the application that I was doing. I don't know how it ended up in my stuff, but because I, I didn't get it from a swap meet or whatever, and I believe it's a prism supply key switch. Uh, somebody told me that after the fact. I didn't realize. Um, but the stock um, pan head frames and a lot of the other stock frames have that hole there and I just you know had it in my hand one day in the shop and I was like I really don't even need a key switch on this bike but it fit well right into that hole and I, as soon as I did that I was just like well doing a born free bike you're always looking for you know some way to stand out other little piece or whatever and surprisingly that's probably gotten as much attention as anything on my bike honestly people are always kind of wigging on that it didn't have a name like prior to building it or anything like that i've never been like a real big name the bike type of person uh, unless it just sort of comes naturally out of it uh, so built the whole bike just with the goal of making you know hand making as many pieces as possible and then um, of course is going to do chrome and polish and show paint. Uh, my good friend Michael Geltz painted the bike uh, Flying Weasel on Instagram and had an idea that we wanted to have ribbon work on top of red and you know full color scale in, in the ribbon and all that and then you know as we were kind of sitting there looking at it with it more or less finished we were tossing you know names around since we were doing the board and free thing just sort of looked at it and i grew up in that era which it's i mean it's been around since like the 60s or whatever but i played Candyland growing up and just looking at the at the ribbon work and stuff on it it was just sort of you know it was like clicked in the brain it was like that looks just like the road from Candyland. Candyland is the perfect name i bought that from a friend of mine massey who a lot of guys in the scene know because he sells tons of parts and puts cool bikes together and stuff he's out east um, i hadn't met him before but i had just uh, i actually sold my people's champ bike uh, and as soon as i sold that i knew i was like i'm going to use this money and get a, a real knucklehead motor you know and uh, saw him selling it and he told me it was already sold when i reached out to him and I just hounded him and said I had cash. I was like, I have cash, you know, like his, he was kind of waiting on the other guy to come through and I just kept bugging. And uh, it was all rebuilt, which I love because I really like to focus my time on the, you know, the, the build of the bike, if you will. I'm not like that concerned with getting deep into the motors. I, I have knowledge of that stuff, but it's just not what I do. Ended up going to Prism's show, congregation show out there and met him there and bought the motor off of him. A little funny thing about it too is it was on a really nice motor stand when I met him to pick it up. And I was like, oh, you gotta let me get that motor stand. And he was like, no, I can't. I only have three of these and I, I won't get them again. And I begged and he ended up giving it to me. But he he's like, I gotta tell you the story if you um, take the motor stand. Apparently the guy, I don't know the guy, but apparently the guy who was making them lost a finger 
in the process of making these motor stands. So uh, he was like, you know, it had some extra, you know, whatever you want to call it about it. I was just like, all right, I'll cherish it since the guy lost his finger, I promise. Like it's, and it's still in my shop holding motors today, so. <laughs> Again, my name's AJ Anderson and I'm originally from Des Moines, Iowa. I now hail out of Ogden, Utah. And uh, you can find me at uh, underscore dream company underscore on Instagram. My name is uh, Jake Elstone. I'm from Ontario, Canada, Peterborough to be exact. Uh, my shop name is Stone Shop Jake or Stone Cycles and we also are known as SwedishManufacturing.com. I brought my 1971 divorced Ironhead Sportster. It's a crusty bike. It's a crusty chopper. I rode it for four years. It's pretty reliable. It gives me shit every once in a while but it's fun as fuck so. You know what, there was a guy, his name's Hawk Losh, and he built for Born Free uh, probably five years ago, but he started that build kind of the same time I was seeing the divorced Ironhead, and I thought, you know what, that's, that's sweet, I want to try that. So uh, using the junk that I had, like we don't have a lot of resources in Ontario for choppers. And I put it together and made a fucking chopper out of 40 other bikes. You know, just junk basically that I made look cool. A lot of people ask me if it's if I machined it. No, you just fucking chop that thing off with a sawzall, and that's pretty much it. There's no oil tr traded between primary and engine or transmission, so you can just cut it off of there and figure out a way to mount it into a big twin frame, and away you go. That's it. That's it. They're peppy. They make a really peppy bike. Like it's a, 
it makes for a fast, kind of almost big twin. I call it a budget big twin, that's what I call it, budget big twin. It gets the eyes, you know, people think it's a shovel head all the time, so I like to tell them that it's not, and then they try to tell me that I'm wrong. So, a lot of guys are trying to do like wheelies and be, like, they treat them like dirt bikes, which is fine. An iron head's, you know, peppy little dirt bike thing, but they'll blow the transmission clean out the bottom. So, one way to get around it was to do this divorce thing. It was popular in the 70s, and then you didn't really hear about it after that, but, you know, there's quite a following for it now. I've done it, I've taught numerous people how to do it. There's even a company that sells the parts to do all of it. And, you know, it's, it's great when you get something, it's like you have a running bike, you blew the transmission out, it's pretty much a death sentence for the thing. You can fix it, but it's gonna cost you a lot more than just cutting it off and buying a, you know, a ratchet top or a cow pie or whatever. I'm actually building another one with a Triumph transmission, so just be weird. Do weird shit. <laughs> yeah, it's a ratchet top, yeah. Not for shovel head. I, you have to convert it. If it's a ratchet top, you have to convert it to the knucklehead length main shaft. Really easy to do. Like, you just basically buy the shaft, a couple of little pieces, and then you can put it together. You gotta make your own primary. Again, not that hard. You gotta just screw around with different pieces until it fits right and then you go yeah okay weld it together that's it fire that fucker up and run it <laughs> uh, the frame that I have is completely custom uh, the the front neck is um, shovel head the bottom part is some of an iron head the rear axle plates are off a of pre-unit triumph just, and the rest is all made. I just used castings and then made the rest of the tubing. That's it. It may not be the fanciest, frilliest thing out there, but I, you know, it's cool to me, so. I do almost everything myself if I can. Uh, paint, paint definitely. I love, the paint at work is it's kind of a pain in the ass, but I, I do love it. No, they're never done. Like I always, I'm always screwing with it. I was screwing with it in the parking lot bringing it into here I was like you know what I'm gonna move that I'm gonna put this over here now because just picky I guess I'm the only one in my family that rides there's nobody else in my family nobody showed an interest to motorcycles just for some reason I mean obviously they're fucking sweet and they're fun as fuck but for some reason so I just picked it up one day I was like you know what motorcycles building a chopper since day one I was like 10 years old like chopper instantly when I was 12, I got a moped, turned it into a chopper. And then, I, you know, after that, it was, it was pretty much over with. My dad used to work. He was a machinist. He would do some work for this guy named Alfie. He had a bike shop, and i just get dragged in there every once in a while, you know? Like, it was, he was old school. You know, like, I don't think any word that came out of his mouth wasn't a swear, like, and I'm five at the time, like, just a little thing. I think it's probably stemmed from that and my dad loved custom cars and like Ed Roth and everything drove him to really what he likes to do which is the old muscle cars and shit so I think it's only natural probably that I picked up bikes. Both together. I love building bikes as much as I love riding them. And which is a lot for both but you know like I hold this. Dude I work all week just to think about motorcycles on the weekend. So my name's Jake Elstone. I'm, uh, I'm on Instagram at Stone Shop Jake. You can find a lot of uh, mine and Haley's products right. on, I should have mentioned I'm dating Haleyization, you probably know better. <laughs> but you can find our stuff on sweetiesmanufacturing.com. It's sweetiesmfg.com. And Stone Shop Jake is how it sounds on Instagram. Find me on there. Uh, yeah, thanks for listening.
George Roeder. I'm from Monroe, Ohio. My shop's called Roeder Racing and Service. Uh, this is Fonzie's knucklehead from the first season of Happy Days. I picked it up a few years back from a friend of mine that was friends with the guy that worked for the prop company that rented the bike to the, the show, Happy Days, and I was able to buy it from him and, and uh, research it and restore it back to original condition. It was a prop bike, so it, it was in uh, the gauntlet. I am a big Clint Eastwood fan, like most people, and I was going to, but it was in that chase scene. There's a big chase scene in the middle of the movie, and at the beginning of the chase scene, he gets on a knucklehead, but it's a wishbone frame knuckle, and I'm like, well, he told me it was in the gauntlet, you know. But if you watch the chase scene, halfway through, he's riding a straight-legged knuckle. So they obviously had more than one bike doing the chase scene. Had, he, had it been the first bike that he got on to start the chase scene, I probably would have. Just saying, I don't know. I'm, I'm a Henry Winkler fan, but, you know, Clint Eastwood's Clint Eastwood. So, <laughs> yeah. So we decided to put it back towards the Happy Days trim. You know, and that's the other thing, unlike everybody else, when you say, I got Fozzie's bike from Happy Days. Well, he rode a Triumph. The first season, he rode a knucklehead. And it was too big for him. I can't imagine that this was too big for him, but that's when they decided to put him on a Triumph for the rest of the shows. There's a guy by the name of Chris Haynes that was the Wrangler for the show the first season. And he tells a lot of stories about having to help getting the bike running and help uh, Henry Winkler get on it and do a ride-in scene and him crashing because he couldn't work the brakes and stuff. So it, there's a lot of great history. My dad started racing when he was real young back in the 50s. And then he started a Harley shop in 72, him and my mom. So I've been around motorcycles my whole life. He started me riding bikes when I was four years old. Started racing right after, and then, of course, my dad was a, a cop, very accomplished professional motorcycle racer, and me and my brothers kind of followed in his shoes and, and did the whole national circuit for several years and had the opportunity to meet a lot of people in the motorcycle industry, like Carl Patrick. You know, that's one of the great things about motorcycling is Man, I've met a lot of people, met a lot of interesting people, done a lot of great things, you know, had a lot of great opportunities, to, adventurous opportunities in my life. So I'm a blessed individual, and I thank the Lord for that, and just happy to be here, you know. <laughs> yeah, I'm George Roeder from uh, Monroeville, Ohio. RoaderRacing.com, we have a website. Uh, we have a race in Wasion. In July, Vintage Bike Race, that's a great event. Come and check that out.
I'm Warren Heyer. I'm from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The name of the shop is JR's Cycle Products. It's a, kind of a mutt of a motorcycle. I've had this one in my brain for years. It's a 41 Harley Davidson knucklehead. It's kind of a mismatch of parts that I've had for years floating around. Front wheel, I think I probably had the longest, the radio laced spool hub. Probably sitting in the shelf for 10, 15 years just waiting to be used. I've always wanted to do a pre-unit front end on a bike. It's, it's always a good look. You know, the, the shrouded front end and the California, Southern California chopper look, you know. The motor is kind of, it, it was done by um, my dad and his crew. He's got a bottom end guy and Senior does the top end. And our buddy in Iowa, Newt, did the, did the heads for me. My dad also did the transmission. Um, the frame was restored. We did that at the shop. Kendall from Kendall Customs did a majority of that work for me. The tins, which are pretty cool, they're the rear is the fender is actually a real Wassel fender. The this tank is a repop, and it was painted by Mitch Bailey in Australia, and he made it. He gave it that patina look. Sissy Bar from Ryan Smith, the buddy, and uh, he's actually got a bike in the show this year. He worked for me years back, and has since gotten into the chopper world and building bikes. You know, beyond that, it's just a it's just a rigid Harley, you know, it's pretty simple and straightforward and just a bunch of old shitty parts that we made work again and bring it back to life. As you're moving forward, things change and, and the style of the bike changes and what I had really originally envisioned for, say, the tins or the front end may not have matched at some point, but when you put something on a bike, you just know it works, you know, and I, I like, we'll, we'll put a chassis together, we'll have a motor and a trans and a frame, like the heart of everything. We'll get it up there and I'll just start throwing parts at it. And this one, this one was easy because I, I it, it did have everything sitting there for me. I didn't change too much. I didn't stray from where we landed. But that's kind of the goal. It has some new stuff, it has some old stuff, it has a good mixture of parts, and it's the way I like to do it. I think it's good to go, you know, we just gotta ride it and see what falls off first and fix it. <laughs> I'm part owners of Mama Tried. Scott Johnson and I are the founders and the brainchild of it. And you know, we have Milwaukee is a backdrop and, and the people in Milwaukee really support us and, and the community and um, the rave is fantastic, the team here and my team is, is stellar. We work our asses off. We're really lucky and a lot of people jump out to help and they just genuinely care and want to have a good time, which is cool. You, again, it's about the people. You surround yourself with the right people, magic stuff happens. Yeah, my dad has a shop, he still has a shop. So I was literally born in the garage and I have lots of uncles and, and I've been around motorcycles a long time. It's, it's in my blood, they say. Um, tried to run a few times from it, but you know, that's, that, that's what happens when you grow up. It's just kind of, I feel like, I feel like it just finds you if, it, if it's meant to work or meant to happen or be. And it's pretty special, you know, the motorcycle community is, has raised me and I can't thank it enough and I, I hope to give back to people and put people in that in that kind of experience with Mama Tried and Flat Out Friday. So I just want to put a bunch of people in the room that can have an experience like I've I've had growing up. So it's special to me, I realize it and I want to make sure that, that other folks get that too. My name is Warren Heyer, I'm part owners of Mama Tried Motorcycle Show and JR's Cycle Products. You can find me on the web at MamaTriedShow.com and JRCycleProducts.com at JRCycleProducts on Instagram and at MamaTriedShow on Instagram.
What's up, Chop Cult? I am nursing a chest cold. Craig not. is not. Perfectly healthy. Perfectly healthy. Go, go to Throttle Edition, buy all the parts, get all the merch, do all the stuff. Like and subscribe to our channel, The Easy Company. Come to Mama Tried, party. Oh, if you don't feel good, you gotta look. I need a haul, right. bad. Yeah, all right. I don't have any. <laughs> I'm John. I'm Craig. We're from we are the Easy Company wow. from nice. Worcester, Massachusetts. We brought our 1947 knucklehead chopper to Mama Tribe. Hell yeah. Uh, it is a fully custom chopper that we built in house. Yeah. Uh, it has a hand built uh, custom frame that's narrowed. Uh, it's got a banana wassail tank. It's got a up set of upsweep pipes. Or bird shooters. Heads with drill holes. It's got speed hold yeah, heads. Nice. Um, yeah, it's a ripper. It's a cool bike. It's way too nice for us. We shouldn't own it. Yep. So we'll see how long it lasts. So the motor is a. I had. I did a couple. I did a little horse trading with a buddy of ours, and I gave him a, a pan motor and a 37 knuckle frame, and he gave us that motor. And then we sent all the cases out to, to be polished and. We redid the whole entire motor. Shout and out to Ice House Polishing. Shout out to Ice House Polishing. Shout out to Joe Langley for the trade. Hell Thank yeah. you. Thank you, dog. But uh, yeah. Dog. Yeah. See, it's, a, it's stamped EL, but we built it to uh, a 74 cubic inch motor. So she gets up and goes. It was cool. Virginia City Roundup rules. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We waited to the last minute. So uh, it, was, it was hectic. But, you know, we, we, we did it. I don't know how, but we did it. Yeah. We definitely uh, gave our painter a bit of an aneurysm when we basically gave him two weeks to paint it. So he did it though. George nailed it. Shout out to George Quirk. Shout out to George Quirk. Yeah. Every bike we build is meant to ride. So we, we, it's the, the whatever, whatever the quality that the customer wants as far as they want a little bit of a crustier bike, cool. If they want a full show bike, they're all going to run, they're all going to ride. You'll be able to rip it down it's the highway. A lot of different styles. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we are two best friends. For, that started building bikes in his parents' shed. That's true. And then uh, we, for some reason, parlayed that into a shop in Worcester. So we barely, opened. Barely scraping by. Barely scraping by, baby. Just started building choppers out of Worcester in, in, this, in this warehouse that our buddies own. So we were just doing it as a hobby, and then people saw the stuff we were doing, and we're like, hey, will you build me a bike? And we're like, I, I guess so. And it just spiraled out of control from there. So now we have a shop. Yeah, and have to make deadlines. I'm John. I'm Greg. We're the Easy Company from Worcester, Massachusetts. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Easy Company, uh, The Easy Co on Instagram. And uh, yeah. Shout hey. out to Chop Shout out to Fall Addiction. All that shit. Shout out to everybody.
is Haley and I'm from Ontario, Canada. I have an XS 650 in the show right now, 78. It's a chopper I built out of spite because someone that bought a XS 650 from someone before didn't know how to change a spark plug. And so I was like, well, I'm just gonna build an XS 650. I don't know, I built it as a joke. Yeah, and then there was a young girl who really liked the bike, um, who liked me on my CB750. She used to wave to me a lot. She was a really young kid waiting for her school bus. And she used to like glittery shit and stuff like that. And she was really cute. And so I decided to build this bike because I knew that when she saw me driving past, she'd be super stoked. And then she'd really like the bike. So I built it for a girl who would never know, a young kid who would never know that the bike is actually for her. So I built it kind of like, in, like for fun, right? Just a joke build. No, what happened is COVID hit and all the kids got out of school or they weren't in school, right? So then I couldn't even show her. So there's going to be a, a young adult in 10 years who will never know that there's a motorcycle that was inspired by her. But, you know, that's the fun of life, I guess. I need all the luck I can get. They were all given to me. I never bought one. So everyone just gives me the gremlin bells and I put them on. But those are all going to come off and they're going on the pan when the pan's done. The pan head is a build that a lot of people are watching right now and it's just basically me building fucking every part like an idiot, um, you know, through the whole process. It's almost done pretty much right now. I'm in the molding phase, so I'll be molding the frame and molding the gas tank. And then I'm gonna be, uh, you know, I gotta build a tweak bar for the Ron Finch Springer. It's got invader wheels, it's fucking badass. That, the pan head, I have a CB750, so hopefully, if I'm a good enough builder, I'll build it so it rides like a Honda. So yeah, it's gonna be my daily. Like I don't wanna build a bike to a uh, show pony, right? Like, fuck that, I, I ride the shit out of my stuff, so it needs to be able to take me to and from work. Yeah, so I started actually in a Japanese speed shop where you know I, I learned under a Yamaha engineer from way back in the 60s, 70s, 80s. I'm just raised around it. So it's like if you had a cat growing up, you'd just have a cat. So it's like bikes were just part of the background. Like really not much to go on there. It's just, it's something you know, it's built into your DNA. So the XS650 was a really smooth build. I rarely ran into hangups with it. And it was just a really good, fun bike to just do, right, as a hobby. Um, when I approach a build, uh, there's lots of things I don't know. And I've got a long list of people that I can call to, someone that may specialize in milling and someone that may specialize in the lathe or someone that may specialize in engine work. And again, I was very fortunate enough to work with for the Yama Dog because that's got, um, that particular bike has uh, snowmobile um, handlebars and it has snowmobile carbs on it. So that's why I call it a Yama Dog, an old take on a Yamaha snowmobile. But I, I worked with some people that were smart enough to kind of guide me if I had any hangups. But that bike is so well built in itself as a stock bike that it's very hard to fuck it up. Very hard to fuck it up. The enjoyment that I get uh, from a bike is the ride in the build, right? So I want to build a bike and I like getting pissed off, not being able to, like I like the whole ups and downs of that. And then the next set of enjoyment for me is the performance aspect. Performance over style any fucking day, but that's just how I am. So if I need to make a corner, a turn, and I can't on the bike that I did, because everyone has growing pains with their choppers or whatever, their custom bikes, everyone has growing pains every fucking person right like for me for the cb750 i've got one named big bone my growing pain was do i want an electronic ignition or am i going to stick with points right and it was a growing pain because the bike was running like fucking shit i did way too much for it I ended up throwing in an electronic ignition it ran so i wanted to stick with points because i wanted to be like i was stuck in this mindset of oem it has to be oem it has to be oem you know like i wanted to be cool but fuck it i want to ride it but the artistry and the skill and the technical shit is making them both work together, like an orchestra. So if you can make your bike run beautifully and still fucking have that look, you're a fucking winner. My name's Haley, and I'm from Ontario, Canada. And you don't have to find me. <laughs>
My name's Tim Skates. I'm out of Waller, Texas. Uh, I have no shop. I built in a 40-foot metal container in my backyard as a hobby. No, I, I actually am a diesel mechanic, and uh, I've worked on drilling rigs forever. So I figured if I could build parts for drilling rigs, I can make motorcycles. I brought a 1972 850 Eldorado. Um, it was a bagger, and I turned it into a chopper. There's a lot of custom moto goosies, but I haven't seen one maybe years ago, but lately, like mine. So it's got a Springer front end and everything. Most of them, they leave the stock style front end and make a bobber or something out of it. I took the stock frame, which was a loop frame. I cut the loop off, made it rigid, uh, brought this uh, Wassel rear fender, handmade uh, aluminum seat. I put a uh, peanut tank on it, a Springer front end, four over Springer, uh, spool front wheel. I'm running the factory back wheel. It's still drive shaft. Uh, I redone the, the carburetor system. It, they crisscrossed in the middle of the bike. Now they're coming straight out and I made them even. And. Uh, where the original battery box was is now a cantina that I split apart and put all my electronics in. My battery and everything is in the cantina. And then I made all the grips, the pegs, the wheel spacers, and the handlebar risers all match. I made everything myself. Well, originally it came with like a car battery. It had big square covers on it and it was ugly. And when I cut the frame, it changed the shape of it anyways. So I just looked around for something different and uh, I had to spread it open two inches to get everything in it, but it worked out. Cutting the frame down and bringing it down to, to make it rigid, but yet I could still take it apart to work on the dry shaft if I have to. Because you know, you make it rigid, you gotta figure out how you're gonna keep the dry shaft in and out. But, uh, I got it to where everything can come apart, be worked on, and go back together. Uh, that may be part of it. There's there's other people doing drive shaft bikes, but uh, I, I just did my take on it. Almost 20 years. I got my first bike in Easy Rider in I think 03. No, that's actually a 16 year old bike. It's just been parked for a while, and uh, they liked it and invited it. So I just like to do different things and. Uh, Somebody told me I'd never make it run, so challenge accepted. When I first built it, we just painted it black, and uh, it, it's a good looking bike, but it has a lot of bling bling, and uh, I just wanted to put something on it to bring the brass out, so we added the gold and did, uh, I call it yin yang. It's uh, scales on one side and lace on the other. So just bring out, makes everything else come out. It's a it's Crown Royal Black, that's my gas bowl. Uh, back in the day, tractors had a glass bowl that when the fuel went by, the settlement would drop into the glass and they would empty it. So that's my version of a fuel filter that I made. Every one of my bikes has a different crown on it. I don't drink, <laughs> but, but it, they're cool bottles. <laughs> Twisted Dot Bobber on Instagram and Tim Skates on uh, Facebook.
My name is Brian Redman. I am from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I brought my 1955 Panhead. Uh, I got it from a friend of mine. I bought it a couple years ago. Uh, and when I got it, it had the, the lower legs were already had those triangles on them, on the frame. But I completely redid them. I was debating whether to knock them off or just, you know, go for it. But usually guys cut off those sidecar loops on the bottom. So these were already cut off. So that's why the triangles went on there. So I decided to keep them. And uh, I really leaned into it, redid all the Bondo on it, uh, and really kind of brought it back to life. Decided to go with a Y-Glide pan at front end with six over tubes in it. Uh, I actually laced up both the wheels myself with Timken Star Hubs, which is a, was a nightmare all, all its own, but uh, it's got an 18 inch rear wheel, 21 front. Uh, the tank was painted by Triples Paintworks in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, shout out to Triples. Uh, if anybody needs good paintwork, Triples Paintworks, gonna plug that. Honestly, lacing up the wheels and getting the wheels to work right because with if you use an old star hub, they they have you can find those axles everywhere because the axles are actually stepped, so they go gradually bigger toward the end. So with the star hubs though, they're 11 16ths on both sides, which sounds smart and easy for swapping out the bearings, but you have to find the machine the the uh, axles that work. So I made an axle for it. I took a three quarter one and and spun it down on the lathe. And it worked a little bit, and then I actually found one from, I think, W&W &W out of Germany, makes a rear axle for it, so I did that. But I, I got lucky, and I happened to find, find the old CCI front axle. So Custom Chrome Industries made those, those axle kits, but they're, they've been gone forever. So now it's like, if I could go back and do it again, I think I would have just found old Star Hubs. I have old Star Hubs, and I just wanted to have them to be like, new, and I thought the, you know, the wheel bearing thing would be easy. But uh, yeah, that was that was like one of the main challenges. And then honestly, the biggest one was Bondo. I like did the Bondo work on the frame. Uh, I wanted to redo it and add to it. If anyone's ever done, Bondo, if you've done Bondo work before, fucking nightmare. So like you have to just get it in there and then sanding it down. Right, your whole garage is covered in dust. Uh, it's it's chaos. But yeah, that was the biggest challenge for me. I made that actually three days before the show. I I got the idea from my buddy Kendall. Uh, Kendall painted the, or he did the pinstriping on my frame, and we were sitting there looking at it, and like Harley had the old brake shroud, they just go into the, the, the drum and it kind of just sits there. So we were kind of thinking about it, if I, you know, if we just bent something up, it would kind of sit there nice. So I was thinking about it, and I actually had an old roll of stainless steel tubing that's, I think it's supposed to be gasoline for a car. So I just took it and bent it. I, I think I made six of those before I got it right. So what I did was I, you know, bent it up, got it all figured out, and then I drilled the lower tree um, for the the hole that the holes that the bolts go through for the cowbells for the, the covers for the, the fork sliders. Um, I drilled that out a little bit, so it's got enough room. So when the legs move, it just kind of holds it in place. It doesn't get stuck. It doesn't bend. So yeah, it's, I, I think it's honestly my favorite touch on the bike, and it was it's such a small detail. I like a front brake, but I didn't like having that black old brake cable going all the way down and I the shroud I had on it was kind of just gross and bent up weird and it looked like it was bent all screwed up so uh, I wanted to make it look a little nicer my dad got me in it when I was little he always had bikes he was a Honda guy growing up and uh, he had a CB 900 and I would always go out to the garage and he'd be working on that and uh, then fast forward a few years um, you know I was riding dirt bikes around a lot and then, you know, I kind of fell away from it for a while where it's like, you know, you kind of go through your teenage years, you're like, ah, that's for old dudes, whatever. And then I kind of got back into it and uh, I built, um, my first chopper was a 79 iron head that I built a few years ago, probably like six, seven years ago now. And I built it with my friend Ian uh, and he's Skinner's McTats head on Instagram. And then, uh, we, so we built everything together since then. So we, we hardtailed that bike. Honestly, I like building more than I do like riding. It's fun, like riding's fun and it's satisfying once you get done with it and go down the street. But like, once I get done with the build, it's like, okay, what's next? So I think I just love all the, the, putsy, the putsiness of like sitting through it and like figuring out these problems because every build is different. And when you have your vision in your head, you got to figure out how to get there. And every bike's different. And it's, uh, that's just what I love about it. It's a little bit of both and you learn things as you go. Like, for example, uh, when I used to make seat pans, we used to like make them too short uh, on the back. And like some people like that, that's a look. But I've learned that like if you get the, if for a king queen scene, if you give it like a nice big-ish hump, then you get enough room support in your back. So it's a little bit of trying to make it fit your body 
And you, but you kind of have to have a vision in mind first of what you're going to do. Are you going to do a Springer? Is it going to be short? Is it going to be long? I do a show called Geared Science. Uh, that's like a, my video series. Um, I started interviewing guys because all these, when I'm building these bikes, all these other guys are who you have to lean on for questions, you know, inspiration, that sort of thing. So I started thinking like, wow, I want to tell everybody about these guys. So I sit down with them, I do an interview about them and their bike, uh, and then just, they're short little bits and like kind of just getting them out there and, and just sharing the love of motorcycles. And then I just try to help out where I can. Like I love this show so much. Like Mama Tried has been like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's like Hanukkah. There's like eight days of stuff to do, you know what I mean? And every year I look forward to this and it is so exciting to see all the bikes out there on the floor. <clears throat> and you know, the cool thing about this show is there's not, there are some, you know, purely show bikes but some of these are like just garage bikes that any any guy like me can build. So that's what I think is so exciting. I'm Brian Redmond from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, you can follow me at Geared Science, and make sure you follow the Mama Tried Flat Out Friday podcast. Uh, and yeah, that's it.
I'm Avery Rick from New Holstein, Wisconsin, and uh, run High Rollers Custom Cycle. Nick Nauman, uh, originally from Iowa, moved up to Wisconsin, High Rollers Custom Cycle. Brought the 1947 Harley Davidson knucklehead called the Warlord. It's a 1970s built Survivor, and uh, when we first got it, it was half and half part in pieces, and uh, now she's together and uh, yeah. running, and it'll be cruising around now. Not not really wanted to change anything because it was set up pretty pretty right the way it was the first time. Yeah. A few small things changed, kind of like the wiring made everything kind of more more reliable through a generator conversion, but everything looks original the way it should be. Um, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, it was a 1970s built Survivor, and uh, the original guy he built it when he was 17 years old and uh, did a lot of bar hopping on it. And uh, then he sold it um, back in the 1980s, and it crossed hands. The guy that we bought it from, he ended up taking it apart, and then he passed away, and then it sat in the garage for a couple years untouched. I think the top motor mount was very challenging, because um, there wasn't one. Yeah. And yeah. we had to make, make it work on that. Yeah, that um, and then... Uh when they built it, they used a panhead frame for the knucklehead motor, so we actually had to make about like a 3 8 plate for the motor mount, front motor mount to sit on to, so that, that way everything will shim right, fit properly. The license plate is WFFW, it's war, Warlord Forever, Forever Warlord. It says, uh, know ye that this is the kingdom of kicks, wine, bikes, drugs, and chicks from David Manzi Z-Rider, a picture yeah. there that he drew. Oh yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. it's covered up from the seat, but... It's still pretty cool that it's there. Yeah, the only part sticking out left is the chicks on the very bottom part, so it works out still. <laughs> we haven't rode it yet. Yeah. It runs and everything's right on it, and uh, its main voyage will be down in Daytona in two weeks. Yeah. So. Yeah, taking it down to Daytona, go cruising around. The name's Avery Rick uh, from New Holstein, Wisconsin, and uh, we're on Instagram, High Rollers Custom Cycle. Yeah, I'm Nick Nauman, originally from Iowa, moved up to Wisconsin, follow High Rollers Custom Cycle.
name's Anthony Sundell from Louisville, Kentucky. I am a custom painter, fabricator. Uh, built a few bikes. Brought a 1964 XLCH, uh, fully molded frame. Bought the bike about a year ago, picked it up in New York, and brought it home. Started out as a 71 XLCH. Decided to pull the motor out and put an earlier style motor in it, Magfire motor. Um, the motor actually came from an old show bike up in Connecticut, and uh, now it's in my bike. Well, I've always had a soft spot for the earlier motors. Uh, it's kind of what, growing up looking at all the old photos of all the old bikes, that's what everyone was riding back in the day, and just wanted to throw it in there. Really, just to switch it up, man. Like, it's, uh, it's not electronic condition anymore, and just the aesthetic of it also, it does look a lot better in that bike. Everything on the bike's been from old Survivor bikes. Uh, picked up parts from chop, Chopper Swapper, you know, uh, local swap meets, stuff like that. I kind of wanted it just to look like a Survivor. A, a club bike from back in the 60s that you would find down in Florida. Um, I lived in Florida for the past 10 years, so that's kind of the whole theme from the bike. The whole paint, paint job from that kind of was inspired from like South Florida. Well, it's, obviously there's a palm tree on it, so I kind of just, flowed with that, or went with that. Uh, really didn't put a whole lot of thought into it, man. I, I kind of just go at it, and that's the first thing I think of when I think of home, and that's what I consider home now is Florida. So, wanted like a beachy vibe, and something that you would see back then, and uh, yeah. So, I did throw, there's a little flamingo on the neck, on the neck molding on it. You have to kind of look up under it to see it. Little, little trick in there. I've been painting about a year and a half now. Uh, I've been sign painting and lettering uh, for probably going on seven or eight years. Uh, that includes pinstriping, and it's kind of just blossomed from there, man. Uh, I have no real background in it. I kind of just taught myself and went after it, and I am obsessed with it, man. Absolutely obsessed with it. Yeah, they kind of pulled that from like the old school lowriders. That's been a big part of my life for a very long time. The motorcycle world's fairly new to me. Uh, I've been mostly into the automotive world for the past 10 years and uh, they're both, they're so similar. There's, there's so many similarities between the two. Uh, it's a multi-step process. Um, it's mostly done in the clear. I don't really want to say exactly how, but <laughs> but it's uh, it's all done after the paintwork's been achieved. The, the recent paintwork I've done, it's been hard to kind of go that route on it, but that's what people want right now. And Honestly, I prefer the look of it. I think it just looks way cooler like that, but you can't beat fresh paint. You just can't. It can be done by pretty much anyone, but it takes a lot of patience to make it look natural. And I feel like I've dedicated a lot of time to actually achieving that. Uh, you don't want to do it and have it look fake. You know, you want to make it look as natural as possible. So, I don't know. That's kind of the route I want with this bike. Like I said, I wanted the Basically emulate something you would find in a barn and you just pulled it right out and that's where it was, you know. My name's Anthony Sundell. I'm from Louisville, Kentucky. Tony Sundell on Instagram. Uh, all my parent works on there. And if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up on that.
So my name is Rob Hudnut. Um, I'm the author, self-published author, illustrator of Greasy Reaper. Uh, I'm from Portland, Oregon. Uh, I have a bike that I built myself. It's called uh, Merlin's Beard. Merlin's Beard is a Sportster. It's a 1200 uh, Evo, and I, you know, I put a Springer on it. I hardtailed it. I kind of wanted to have like a little wizard deal going on with it. So I did. Um, there's there's like some cast wizards holding like glass balls and stuff like that, like on the bike. The exhaust gets a lot of compliments. It's it's a it's a dual exhaust that so a sports are like a lot of those bikes are always on the right side. Mine crosses over, so you kind of have like the true duels. But then I also have two tips on them that are fluted. And it's just got a really unique look. This spring, I'm gonna be tearing it all the way down and metal flaking the frame and all the tins, like a deep purple metal flake. And then doing like an image transfer on the tank, something that I've been designing on, on Photoshop. And then um, pinstripe the whole thing, who knows? So my dad was always into European bikes. My older brother and I, and my dad spent a lot of garage time together. And that's kind of where I got my, my gearhead kind of roots. My illustration books are basically a how-to book of how to work on choppers, how to work on bikes, how to create um, interesting things like taillights and how to do things like uh, paint, metal flake, and in image transfers and just stuff like that. And in this past year, I uh, put out a game board, it's a chopper themed game board. It's called um, the Dicey Campout. And people are enjoying it. It's a fun game. You gotta be honest, it's a pretty fun game. My name is Rob Hudnut. I'm a self published author and illustrator of Greasy Reaper, how to books. Um, if you'd like to go check out my Instagram page, it's just Greasy Reaper. If you'd like to go and check out all of my swag, I've got t-shirts and hoodies and calendars and posters and lots of cool stuff, including my books and my board game, which is the Dicey Campout. Um, you can go to uh, greasyreaper.com.